Samantala, nakatutok naman ang ating correspondent na si uh, Cecil Larizabal dyan sa Senado para malaman ang pinakahuling kaganapan doon at uh, ba, we will bring her to you uh, live or, or just even on the phone a little later on kapag meron na pong um, panibagong kaganapan dyan. Pwede na nga daw pong hulihin si Senador Antonio Trildianes dahil sa pagbawi ng amnestia sa kanya. At ngayon, meron na daw mga pulis sa Senado, naroon ang aming correspondent na si Cecil Lardizabal. Cecil, andyan pa ba si Senador Trillanes? Cecil? All right, uh, we'll try to have a... Siguro, tawagan natin ulit si Cecil Lardizabal. Siya po ang ating uh, correspondent dyan sa Senado. Nakantabay po, po siya dyan para ibigay sa atin ng pinakahuling kaganapan. Kung Makikita po natin medyo masyado pong malapit ang uh, angulo ng ating camera no pero kung di po ako nagkakamali ito po yung harap ng Senado no it seems like this is the well we'll I'm sure we'll get a better view a little later on so ang nangyari po kanina about uh, at least an hour ago nandoon po si Senador Antonio Trillanes kinausap nga niya, niya ho ang media hinggil dito at ano ho ang kanyang reaksyon dito sa proclamation number 572 well puntahan muna natin si Cecil Lardizabal Cecil uh, thank you dito sa may uh, entrance mismo ng uh, Senate of the Philippines sa baba uh, nandito na yung ibang uh, tinatawag na composite team ng uh, PNP, CIDG o Criminal Investigation and Detection Group. Uh, alam mo, medyo hindi sila nagsasalita dahil uh, ayon sa kanilang utos ay wala silang dapat sabihin ang instruction sa kanila pero meron tayong nakausap kanina na isang miyembro ng CIDG uh, arresting team at uh, nasabi niyan ang uh, happy daw nila ay si uh, uh, Police Senior Superintendent Vicente Danao at sinasabi niya na ang instruction ay magbigay ng legal order. Cecil, magkakasya na. na. Ah, babalikan ka namin mamaya. Meron lang nagsasagawa na kasi ngayon ng press briefing si Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara hinggil nga sa pagwawi ng Malacanang sa amnistiya ni Senador Antonio Trillanes. Ayan na po siya. Pakinggan natin. Opening statement. <laughs> All right, okay, okay, okay. Okay, all right. Okay? Go na? Yes, sir. Uh, Magandang hali po sa lahat ng nanonood at uh, sa kanilang mga television uh, sets at mga nakikinig sa radyo. Uh, pinatawag po namin ang uh, press conference ito para masagot ang maraming katanungan na may kinalaman sa uh, proclamation na in ng Presidente na sa pagbaliwala ng uh, amnesty proclamation in so far as Senator Trillanes is concerned. So, uh, we are here to answer questions from the media. So, uh, may we have the first question, please? Um, can you just identify yourself? Yeah, please identify yourself before you ask. <laughs> right. Thank you. So you're Andrew. <laughs> right, Andrew. Sir, can you walk us through the process? What went behind this proclamation? Can you start through the process of the... All right. Um, yeah, we, we are uh, talking about proclamation number 572. Signed by the President uh, on August uh, 31, 2018. Just a couple of days before he departed with uh, many members of the cabinet for uh, Israel and uh, Jordan. All right, this was also attested by uh, Executive Secretary Majel Deya. And um, I was informed about it uh, on the day of the departure of uh, the president, uh, verbally at least. And uh, I got a hard copy of the proclamation, a certified copy, on the yesterday. I understand that uh, the proclamation was published in a newspaper of uh, general circulation uh, today, this morning. So I am not, I do not have any personal knowledge as to when the review of uh, the amnesty given to uh, Senator uh, Filianes actually began. But what I know is that uh, this matter of review 
has been there for quite some time. It's not as if uh, this happened only uh, five days ago or uh, uh, nothing of that sort. I think this has been uh, being discussed uh, a couple of years ago, as far back as 2013, I guess. Uh, but it just so happened that uh, now uh, it was only recently that the proclamation was uh, uh, issued by the president. Take note that the title of the proclamation is Revocation of DND Ad Hoc Committee Resolution Number 2, dated January 31, 2011, insofar as it granted amnesty to former uh, LTSG uh, Antonio Trillanes IV. All right, so uh, while the title indicates that it's a revocation, the contents of the proclamation, if you have read uh, a copy of that proclamation, would show that it actually nullified or declared void ab initio, all right, the issuance of the amnesty to uh, uh, Senator Trillanes, as if it never existed, never been valid for non-compliance with certain mandatory requirements for the availment of that amnesty. So, binali wala ito, as if it never existed. It's not, you know, something that was given and being taken back, all right? It's a declaration that it was void from the moment that it was issued. Next question. Yes, Ina. So, what makes it different from the amnesty granted to the other non officers? Basically, entirely the same um, circumstances. Well, uh, the proclamation speaks of certain non-compliance on the part of Senator Trillanes with requirements for the grant of the amnesty. You will take note that uh, there is a me there is mention of Proclamation Number 75, Series of 2010. So that is the general proclamation of amnesty to those who were involved in the uh, Oakwood mutiny. The Manila Peninsula uh, siege and uh, marine standoff no, on various dates, several dates yon. But uh, to be able to implement that grant of uh, amnesty, merong kinreate yung proclamation na yon na ad hoc committee sa Department of National Defense uh, to accept yung applications, na individual applications for amnesty. So may mga basic requirements. Two of the most notable requirements, and this is uh, apparently... Uh, were not complied by Senator, uh, Senator uh, Trillanes ay yung formal uh, pag-fill up pers in person under oath of an official application for amnesty. And the other major requirement is that he should have admitted fault, all right, or guilt doon sa mga charges uh, na filed against him. There must be an express admission of guilt. All right, before um, uh, you can be eligible for amnesty. All right. So apparently, based on the review undertaken, I hindi siya na comply dito. As a matter of fact, there are allegations that uh, to the uh, that to the media he said, na he, he parang uh, he he does not admit any guilt uh, of the offenses charged. No? Take note that for purposes of amnesty, we are talking about high crimes, political crimes, such as uh, rebellion, sedition, mutiny, coup d'etat. And he was in fact charged with coup d'etat in a regular course of law. Yes, please. Uh, uh, please identify yourself. Uh, for now, the proclamation only covers him, no? but uh, I, I believe that uh, maybe others who might be similarly situated are also, uh, yung kanilang applications might have, uh, are also being reviewed. No? Excuse me, sir. Not too sure about that, but I suppose that uh, since there is a review ongoing, uh, it might include not only uh, Senator Trillanes, but also the others. So. Hi, Jeff. Well, uh, let him just uh, show it. No, uh, what we're saying is, the requirement of an application under oath does not exist in the records, 
and that there are no records either of his any of admission of guilt on his part no, for the charges filed against him. Okay. Sir, Leanne, uh, by itself, no. Uh, the proclamation directs uh, the Department of Justice, as well as the Armed Forces of the Philippines, no, to take the necessary uh, action in order to uh, continue the proceedings. Why AFP? Because apart from the criminal complaint for coup d'état pending with the Makati Regional Trial Court, at the time of the issuance of the uh, amnesty or of the proclamation uh, granting the amnesty, I meron ding a uh, court martial proceedings uh, ongoing uh, before the Department of National Defense no, or Armed Forces uh, uh, on the matter of uh, the mutiny, conduct and becoming of an officer and so forth and so on. Uh, so, meron ding parallel proceedings happening before the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Kaya, meron ding directive addressed to the AFP to continue the proceedings against Senator Trillanes. So, um, that, that will probably entail the issuance of more detailed orders, no? like uh, on the part of the prosecution, we will probably have to uh, reopen the case uh, that was filed before the RTC. So, they cannot be arrested now without the uh, the, the, the proclamation has directed uh, all enforcement agencies to apprehend him. So uh, he will be placed in custody. Uh, as to where that will be, that is a matter that uh, we need to await a uh, little. And uh, maybe for now, uh, if he's uh, attending sessions at the Senate, the Senate can probably uh, you know, put him under its custody in the meantime. The issue of legislative immunity does not rise in this case. It's not applicable. You know, there is a provision under the Constitution that provides the, uh, or gives uh, members of Congress the privilege of not being arrested while Congress is in session. But take note that that will apply only if the offense charge is punishable by an imprisonment of uh, not more than six years. So yun lang ang applicable yung privilege na yun. If the offense carries a penalty not exceeding six years. But could it talk? carries the penalty of life imprisonment and for that reason is non bailable Yes, Joseph. So who conducted the review? Uh, I am not sure who exactly conducted the review, but I suppose uh, this might have been uh, uh, studied uh, in the past by the Office of the Solicitor General. Mm -hmm. Sir, okay. Um, does this have to satisfy the two requirements the application and the admission to be qualified for anything. You mean uh, if he will do the whole thing? No. 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 Uh, at that, that, that time, at, at that time, That's if right. he complied with those requirements, would he have been entitled? I guess the answer to that question is a definite yes. yes if he, you know, if he was given amnesty, notwithstanding that um, the requirements were not, uh, you know, strictly met, with more reason that that amnesty would have given to him if such requirements were, were actually met. So because in 2011, we had a report in your video ah. showing that he did apply, at least in first uh, first uh, requirement, he applied mm -hmm. for an amnesty. Then, okay, then let him show it. But uh, that is really beside the point because there is this more important requirement of admitting one's fault, no? Before one can be entitled to an amnesty, you must first admit your guilt for rebellion, sedition, or could it pass the case may be. Now, show proof that he actually, uh, you know, admitted guilt for such offenses. Without that, sir, valid no 570, no? Without that, no, proof uh, na, that he did uh, admit uh, to the crime. Uh, that's that's uh, what the proclamation says. No? And, uh, upon review, and these basic requirements, mandatory requirements were not met, that was the basis for a declaration by the president that uh, uh, amnesty granted to him at that time was actually void ab initio. Why only specific to Senator I am not saying that it's specific only to him. Uh, as a matter of fact, I said earlier that I have reasons to believe that uh, maybe people similarly situa situated like 
uh, as uh, um, Senator Tullianes, you know, uh, their, uh, the grant of amnesty to them might also be under review. You talked about reopening the case um, on the part of the Department of Justice, which was prosecuted this case with the Makati RTC and now this case again. From here on, um, what are we looking at, sir? Um, how are we going to do about it? Um, that reopening and because of the revocation so far only pertains to them, does that also mean that, that if we reopen that particular case, it will only apply to uh, First, we have to check our records first, okay? Because that the case was uh, filed and prosecuted way back in uh, 20, 2003. All right, so 15 years ago, and uh, we really have to look at the records of the case uh, if, uh, you know, the proceedings were merely suspended or if there was an order of dismissal and stuff like that. So we need we need to find that out first. Uh, maybe, uh, all right, uh, Prosecutor General OIC Fadilion may be able to answer the question. <laughs> Submitted or what? Uh, 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 the decision was about to be promulgated way back in 2010. Uh, however, uh, the decision was about to be promulgated in 2010. However, because of the manifestation of the uh, defense that there was an application for amnesty or amnesty was being offered, the court suspended the promulgation. And it was supposed to have been subject to the compliance with all the requirements for application for amnesty. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as our records, the, the records that we've seen so far, there are among the accused who were actually, uh, there, were there was a decision which was rendered by an acting presiding judge who took over Judge Pimentel. And uh, she approved the uh, she approved the amnesty, which was granted to some of the accused. But when I looked at the records, it did not include Senator Trillanes. So we're still in the process of looking at all other decisions of Regional Trial Court Branch 148 as to other decisions that may have been rendered as far as the other accused are concerned. So the applications are presented to the court, Palaser. No, manifestations, manifestations were filed with the court saying that the accused who had filed or availed of amnesty had complied with the requirements. These were filed by their respective counsel. So on the basis of that, the acting presiding judge at that time approved the said, uh, uh, approved the said uh, applications. The, as far as the order that I have reviewed so far this morning, it did not include the name of Senator Trillanes. But again, we're having our uh, prosecutors in Makati check with Regional Trial Court Branch 148, check with the records to find out uh, if there were other orders or decisions that were rendered pursuant to approving the uh, amnesty applied for. What, what does it mean? <coughs> In this case, it was already up for the, the, the prosecution and defense were already completed, and it was already up for promulgation. Yes, the decision, uh, the the case was already submitted for decision. In fact, uh, if I recall. Judge Pimentel already came out, scheduled it for promulgation, and he had with him a copy of the decision. He was just about to read, promulgate the decision when uh, there was a manifestation from the defense counsel stating that there was amnesty that was supposed to be granted to all of the accused. Sir, what does that mean? Earlier, there was no application for Lanas or RTC. Kasi there are, if you look if you look at the case, there are about 31. There are about 31 accused in this case. Now, if all of them availed of uh, amnesty, then naturally there would have to be a manifestation to the court informing the court that they had complied with all the requirements. Mm -hmm. Apparently, not all of them were represented by one counsel. Mm -hmm. So, depending on who filed the manifestation, the orders would come out. Now, what I'm saying is that based on what I have checked so far, it did not include the name of Senator Trillanes. So, walang application? Well, not in that order. It would appear that in that particular order, it would appear that as far as Senator Trillanes is concerned, wala pang approval. So, we're checking other orders of the court. If magubuhay ulit yung kaso, sir, ibig sabihin, desisyon na lang yung ulang. Judge Pimentel, ang dyan pa ba, sir? Wala na po. Uh, Judge Pimentel retired already, I think, 2010. Okay, so... 
there's another judge, Judge Soriano, if I'm not mistaken, who is the acting presiding judge of RTC Branch 148. And you are correct. If the case will be reopened, it is only for the purposes of, one, asking for the issuance of an alias warrant of arrest, and second, for asking the court to promulgate the decision, considering that the court had already previously acquired jurisdiction over the person of the accused. Okay, sir. Uh, do you need to apply for a warrant? Or do you have been Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, after the proper review of the records of this case, and uh, we have determined that it's, uh, it's something that is right for reopening, all right, that there are grounds to reopen the case, then first order of the day will be uh, simply to ask the court for the issuance of an alias warrant so that uh, the person of the accused will be brought into custody of the court. Uh, we'll do it as soon as we can, uh, as soon as we find all the records pertaining to this case. Uh, you will please note that this happened, this case uh, uh, happened uh, 15 years ago, so we'll just have to look into archives, archives and other, you know, uh, case records uh, on file. Well, uh, that's a matter for the Senate to discuss. No, I think the issue there is on the matter of custody in the meantime. All right, but as I have explained, the matter of uh, privilege from arrest while Congress is in session, which it is right now, uh, does not apply if the offense charge is punishable by more than six years, as in this case, because this is good at all. Sir, should the AFP and PNP arrest now? I'm sorry? Should the PNP and the AFP... There is a directive coming from the president himself as commander-in-chief, and I guess uh, it's something that has to be obeyed. That has to be? Obeyed. Obeyed. Right. Sir, is there a the situation? Yung kay Senator De Lima, I charges for a uh, regular uh, criminal offense. No? But this one is amnesty uh, being set aside. And of course, uh, nahandun yung uh, charge naman ng uh, coup d'etat, no? violation of the law on coup d'etats, no? prohibiting coup d'etats. So uh, I cannot really say whether uh, the two cases are you know, squarely uh, uh, on the same footing. Can yes, sir. Uh, Dexter, Hi, Dexter. Uh, you mentioned that you were in September to Israel. Okay. Ano po yung No, it was only the executive secretary who gave notice to me about a proclamation that had been signed by the president a couple of days before their departure date. And uh, so, being the uh, designated officer in charge, I guess uh, it was his duty really uh, to inform me about this very important proclamation. Being the OIC of the Office of the President, and po ang putos ni po Well, uh, it's simply uh, for uh, the concerned agencies to implement what the President has directed. In Section 2 of the proclamation, he made uh, two specific directives, and that one is addressed to the, the Department of Justice and to the Armed Forces to uh, continue with the proceedings that were suspended, uh, if at all suspended, uh, at the time that the amnesty was uh, granted to Senator Trillanes. And also uh, another directive, this time addressed to law enforcement agencies to cause the apprehension of Senator Trillanes so that he might be brought uh, into custody. My timeline, who will be released the PIT or AFP for the arrest of... Uh... No specific timeline, but this is in effect, and uh, as soon as it is uh, uh, feasible to do it, then so be it. So in court martial, sir, if at all suspended, mm -hmm. will then proceed. And then second, the prosecution before Makati 148 um, will also proceed. But sir, since Judge Pimentel already resigned, there's a new presiding judge. Mm -hmm. What will happen to the decision written by Pimentel? It will not be the one that will be understood. It will be an entirely new appreciation by the presiding judge, sir. Mm -hmm.
it will not be the same because the decision that was made with the corporate board was to accept. So if this is wrong, it's going to be a promulgation to only be as far as that. All right. Uh, okay, so uh, um, uh, yung kasing decision about to be promulgated uh, apparently pertains to all of the accused. No? So, uh, uh, dahil itong development na ito is something that pertains only to Senator Trillanes, then probably there might be some need to review yung uh, decision that has been prepared before but not promulgated. But based on the proceedings, na lang, so they will not be a, a new trial, sir, para review na lang on the proceedings as to the alleged participation. In my opinion, since a full-blown trial, assuming that a full-blown trial has already been conducted, then I guess uh, there will be no need to repeat. Uh, all of these uh, are made uh, of record by uh, our courts, which are courts of uh, record. And so any uh, judge who will take over and promulgate the judgment need only go through uh, the transcripts, the pleadings, the case files, and so forth and so on, without need to conduct a new trial altogether. Sir, kasi may CID Jew personal na kayo sa Senate, so they can already affect the order. Uh, they can, actually. So, and yeah, I think Senator Kiliana says uh, he's ready. He's ready. So, uh, so be it. All right? Sir, again, Yes, sir. As long as people are quite surprised with this development, is there such a uh, when it comes to revocation. Well, as I said, this is not a matter of revocation. When you say you revoke, uh, there's something that was actually given validly and you are taking it back for some reasons. But that does not seem to be the case here. This proclamation declares that the grant was invalid and void ad initio, right from the beginning. So you're not taking back something you are declaring that something never actually validly existed. Sir, yes. I guess that's a different matter altogether, you know. Uh, we're talking about executive clemency and that pertains to the person who is the uh, chief executive at the time that uh, the application will be granted, no? So he'll be dealing with uh, President Duterte this time if he applies, assuming that he will be willing to do that. So, siyempre, sir, perception, sir, kinahabol yung kalaban, di ba, sir, ng Pangulo. Sir, yun yung magiging ano, political persecution. That would be the line, definitely. Uh, well, we cannot really prevent people or uh, Senator Trillanes from thinking that way. But from the point of view of government, if there is something that needs to be done, then it should be done regardless of the timing. Especially if an act is uh, uh, deemed void from the beginning, we're not talking about any prescriptive period here. The government is not uh, stopped by a mistake that was uh, done by its own officers. And a matter that uh, is void or uh, an act which is void from the beginning uh, can be challenged and attacked at any time, no matter the amount of time that has elapsed. So what prompted the review of <laughs> I can't really answer that, you know. Uh, but I guess this is really a matter of making sure that uh, uh, all necessary legal requirements in so far as uh, important matters like this have been complied with. Now, as to what other reasons uh, there might have been, I'm not privy to that. I'm sorry to say. Sir, earlier really, you said, sir, you assumed, diba, sir, na baka meron din review doon sa iba. Mm -hmm. Is that, sir, thank you for the others who were granted amnesty, mm -hmm. among the officers. Some of them are supporters of the president, mm -hmm. diba, sir? So, mm -hmm. but to your knowledge, sir, um, wala kang specific knowledge na meron ng ongoing. Parang you just No, I have no personal knowledge. I don't have any specific knowledge that uh, such a review covering other people. Uh, is ongoing, but uh, I just surmise that uh, in as much as something like this was reopened, then um, probably the same thing is also being done in so far as people who are similarly situated are concerned. Sir, yes, Anil. <laughs> well, the proclamation says uh, he will be committed to where he was before at the time that the amnesty was granted, no, so wherever he may be. If he was at the Makati City Jail at the time, then uh, if the case is reopened and a warrant, the uh, illness warrant is issued against him, then he goes there. If he was uh, uh, under detention 
uh, within the premises of the armed forces because of the martial law proceedings then ongoing, then he will be uh, restored or uh, detained in, in the same uh, location. Sir, it all depends on where he was at the time that the uh, amnesty was issued. Sir, we're waiting for an alias warrant. Why did you send That's what I said. No, uh, maybe that's the reason why Senator uh, uh, Tito Soto was uh, w would like to discuss this with with the rest of his colleagues. So uh, we believe that's a fair and reasonable arrangement. In the meantime, that the prosecution, uh, the DOJ, and the armed forces are still, you know, reviewing their records. Uh, but there's already a directive to put him under custody, so I guess uh, that's the best possible arrangement in the meantime. But he is not immune from arrest, as I would like to emphasize. All right, that's just for convenience. Should the custody being spoken of in the proclamation is in terms of immediate custody, but since subsequently you'll be, you will be applying for the issuance of an alias warrant, then there mm -hmm. has to be a return of the warrant, and therefore we will follow the same procedure that the court will now determine where via commitment order shall be Yes, uh, very true. Uh, once the court acquires jurisdiction over the person of the accused, then his place of detention will also be uh, uh, determined by the court which acquired jurisdiction. Di ba? Kasi nga yung mga records, ahalukayin pa namin yan eh. 2003 case pa. And uh, we got this uh, proclamation only yesterday. So we need to take a look at the records first. Sir, it's now the void nga eh. not only irregular but void no so i cannot really answer for those uh, for the people who granted the uh, amnesty at that time remember that there was an ad hoc committee under proclamation number 75 during the time of president noinoy aquino uh, uh, which created this uh, ad hoc committee uh, for the grant of amnesty to uh, those involved in the mutiny in the uh, Oakwood, yeah, the Oakwood mutiny and uh, the other incidents, no? And uh, it was, uh, I think, the approval of the applications for amnesty at that time was uh, given by uh, the DND secretary at that time, the uh, secretary Voltaire Gasmin, all right, as mentioned in the proclamation. So, uh, well, if there was non-compliance with some requirements, but uh, nonetheless, uh, amnesty was granted, I think it would be for Senator, uh, I mean, uh, Secretary uh, Voltaire to explain that. No, uh, it's not for us to, you know, to dwell into that matter because that happened uh, many years ago. Going back to the requirements, he has to satisfy both. Just one. Yeah, both, both. Uh, because I guess now I've not seen the form, but I suppose that that form would contain a section where he would uh, uh, expressly admit that uh, he's guilty of uh, the offense charge. No, because I would surmise nakasama yun because that form, application form, is under oath. All right. So uh, such an important requirement like admission of guilt is something that should be contained in that form under oath. So uh, to me, that is the more important uh, requirement rather than the form, all right? It's the admission of guilt and that you are pleading for executive clemency. Do you but think no, Sabine, sir, even if he can prove that he did apply in 2011, <laughs> pero wala namang admission? Yeah, that would seem to be the case. Uh, ang, ang problema rito, para meron yatang certain media statements si uh, Senator Trillanes, na parang sinasabi niya na dinin disclaim niya uh, expressly uh, yung kanyang guilt for any wrongdoing and that uh, apparently according to the uh, proclamation, uh, hindi yan ang dapat na chinacharge sa kanya but something else. No? Kung ano yung something else na yun, hindi niya sinabi. Pero uh, apparently, based on the proclamation again, ay uh, meron siya mga statements to the media before na sinasabi niya na hindi ito ang charges to which I will plead guilty. Something to that effect. Okay. Sir, wala attachment ng admission of guilt sa application? Or affidavit? I, uh, I'm thinking ko nga it might be in the form of an affidavit, all right, under oath, attached to the form, or incorporated in the form itself. So, uh -oh. under oath? Yes, oh, yun ang mahalaga dun eh. For something like that, it's got to be under oath. Sir, no. this was his interview in 2011, right? Quote, we admit guilt as far as rising up against the most corrupt president, referring to 
Singapore, Singapore, this country has ever had proudly. Does this admit, does this qualify as an admission of the crime? The ch crime charge is coup d'etat. All right, so uh, there must be an express admission of guilt to the offense of coup d'etat. You may mention on Twitter. Yes, of course. So. Not just a mere uprising against the movement. Yes, because the elements may be different. All right. Mm -hmm. Sir, for those who are saying that there will, this will create a chilling effect mm -hmm. on not only the opposition, but those who are in the who may be opposing this administration, mm -hmm. that they can no longer pala verbalize their opposition and then things like this happen. What is the message? No, it's not a question of uh, political opposition. It's a matter of compliance with the law. All right, this is a matter which is provided in the Constitution itself. When the executive, uh, chief executive grants uh, clemency, all, right, all the requirements must be naturally complied with. So we're just following the rule of law here. If something was not uh, followed before, then uh, the government is not barred from making the proper rectification to such a mistake. All right, so that's how we view these matters, no? And this may happen again in the future, not you know, not to scare anyone, but just to ensure that all the laws are followed and obeyed. Sir, I will any comment. This is the third decision now na uh, nakalagay abilisyo from the beginning. First is Seneno, second is the land resource with the Mm. So what is your question? No, it just so happened that all of these matters um, seem to be invalid right from the beginning. Nakakataon lang yan. It's not a fad. I'm telling you, it's not a fad. It just so happened that all of these events, you know, these acts happen to be declared up after a serious review as void from a legal standpoint. <coughs> Walang pattern yun. Uh, ano lang yun? Uh, nagkakataon lang yun. Uh, yeah. Can we see, can we see, it's up to him. It's up to him. I will not teach him what to do. His lawyers are more, you know, are very capable of uh, thinking what the legal remedies are available to him. Secretary, clarification lang. If you can prove na from the very start, meron naman talaga siyang requirement, can the amnesty be restored without him having to apply Let's cross the bridge when we get there. But the repositories of all these documents are saying, sir, that they do not exist. That's what the DND says. They have no records of such an official application. So if... Uh, sorry? Well, we don't know. Uh, we presume that uh, uh, duties are regularly performed not only in the civil government but also you know in the military organization. So itong declaration uh, of Indonesia, where can he challenge it? <laughs> well, as right I now, said, it's it's it's, it's up to him. I will, I will not uh, I will not uh, I mean, teach him. Point. You know, <laughs> he has plenty of lawyers. He has plenty of lawyers. First impression. Ah. Supreme Court, sir. Uh, well, I guess um, this is, you know, any act on the part of uh, government is subject to judicial review uh, to determine whether there has been grave abuse of discretion. So that's in the Constitution. So, uh, so be it. So, bahala uh, na sila. Pick it up from there. Judicial review by... Huh? Judicial review in general. Huh. So uh, depending on the hierarchy of courts, no, kung saan nila tingin na proper, depending on the importance of the of the issue, then they sh they will have to decide where to go. But the first venue for him, I think, is the office of the president, sir, for exhaustion of remedies, sir. He has to... No, this is not an administrative case. All right, this is a matter of uh, executive prerogative. This is uh, executive uh, clemency that we're talking about. This is an act of grace. All right, so we're not talking about a simple administrative case where you have to exhaust administrative remedies before you go to courts. All right, so this pertains to something that is purely personal to the president because it, it involves his discretion. All right, in the case of amnesty, of course, that's subject to concurrence by uh, majority vote of the Congress, all right, in the case of amnesty. Amnesty? Yes, exactly. I'm saying executive clemency in general is a matter of grace on the part of the president. But with respect to amnesty, which involves political crimes, all right, the concurrence of a majority of Congress is a requirement.
This one, it does not There was an issue, I remember, before it was presented to Congress, there was no admission of guilt, even way back. There was an issue raised. Ah, no admission of guilt, so... Yes, because before you present it to Congress, all the requirements have to be complied. Okay, all right. Uh, First, this one does not need the concurrence of Congress. Amnesty requires uh -oh, congressional concurrence. But, 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 yeah, but uh, you know, what will Congress concur to if in the beginning it was invalid? Okay. Sir, has there been an amnesty before in a void? Did they in a void? I'm sorry, again. Has there been an amnesty before that was declared happening? Or is this really the first? I uh, do not recall of any that has happened in the past, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, we're talking about. Uh, uh, decades of uh, executive clemency uh, there might have been but uh, I don't recall any where uh, an amnesty given was uh, set aside for being uh, void of so since this was presented to Congress sir this does not cure whatever it is that is a legal issue that uh, it's a legal issue that perhaps uh, will have to be resolved in due time sir, uh, mm. Mm -hmm. clarification of the review was done by Office of the Solicitor General. Is it under uh, Solzhen Talita or the Sajid 2013 from the previous Solzhen uh, I don't have uh, personal knowledge exactly as to who initiated the review and the uh, exact time where it was commenced. No? But what I know is that uh, this is something that did not happen last week or uh, a month ago, but it's something that is uh, in the pipeline uh, for quite some time. I'm talking about maybe a couple of years back. But under uh, under uh, I, <laughs> I can't say. I'm not sure because I don't have personal knowledge. Okay, so you're not sure if it's the legal staff of the palace for their sir, medyo, not, not clear exactly because, okay. uh, you know, I just got, I just got a copy of this proclamation uh, yesterday. And I did not have an opportunity to trace it back. Uh, how did it start? Who commenced it? By uh, for what reason? Uh, uh, those details I do not have personal knowledge of. So which agency made the final recommendation for the president? Ito yung result ng review namin. The office of the president din mismo ang magbibigay ng go signal don, no? Because it has to be signed by the president. Then I suppose uh, uh, before it gets signed by uh, the president, it will have to be reviewed by the lawyers at the office of the president. Categorically, we can't say right now, sir, kung ito is or under um, solely wala pa tayo. I would say that uh, probably uh, both, no? Uh, OSG lawyers and Malacanang lawyers have reviewed this matter, no? Because this is a matter that pertains to the chief executive. So uh, the sole gen would necessarily be uh, uh, consulted or uh, involved, as well as lawyers working at the at the office of the president, where I used to uh, to be or work. Sir, 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 <laughs> Any further questions, uh, gentlemen, please? Uh, 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 okay, uh, uh, <laughs> I have submitted the report of uh, the DOJ in consultation with the Office of the Government Corporate Council to the President. And there uh, are recommendations in that uh, report. Uh, the evaluation report by the DOJ on the validity of the na yung Filipino uh, transaction with landing. No? So, uh, many recommendations, but uh, I, get, I understand that the President was unable to approve the recommendations uh, before he left for Israel and Jordan. So, uh, uh, I beg your indulgence that I cannot uh, disclose further details or uh, conclusions and findings and uh, more so the recommendations until they have been actually approved by the president. When he, re when he returns and he approves the recommendations, then probably we can call another uh, briefing like this, if uh, you please. All right, so if there are no further Thank questions, so all right. Thank you very much, uh, all of you. And I'll see you on September 11th, all right? For